Number 86. During a recent winter month in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, it was necessary to obtain 3,500 kilowatt hours of heat provided by a natural gas furnace with an 89% efficiency to keep a small house warm. And then they say that the efficiency of a gas furnace is the percent of the heat produced by combustion that is transferred into the house. But we're in the middle of this problem, right? We just need to do C and D. So C says what mass of carbon dioxide is produced by the combustion of methane used to heat the house. So there's a couple of things that we've already done. We're on part C, so I'm going to take stuff from part A. In part A, we found the balance equation, and we also stated that the delta H of this equation for the methane uh, was a release of heat because it's negative, and it's 890.8 kilojoules per mole. We also found out that the total heat that is needed to heat this house is 1.416 times 10 to the 7th kilojoules. So I'm going to use this information in order to answer C. If you, if you need a refresher as to how we got this information, you could always go back to uh, part A. If you're on the playlist, it's just like two videos back, all right? And then you can go check that out. But now let's just figure out how much mass of carbon dioxide. So the first thing that we have to do is basically we can use, well, we have to use the total heat and the delta H value to get the mass of carbon dioxide. In this case, the grams equals question mark. We want to find out how much um, mass of carbon dioxide is here. So what we're going to do is start with what you're given. I have 1.416 times 10 to the seventh kilojoules. And now I want to use this delta H value for the whole equation to go from kilojoules to moles. So times by a ratio. If I don't want kilojoules anymore, that has to go on the bottom and moles are going to go on the top. Now, moles of who? Well, go to answer the question, right? Go straight for the question. They wanted carbon dioxide, so we're going to do carbon dioxide. Now let's just write the numbers. Well, the kilojoules is what the number is, right? 890.8. Now you can put the negative, but remember the negative doesn't mean that it's a negative value. It just means that it's being released. So I won't add the negative because there's no such thing as negative masses, right? What mass of carbon dioxide? So even if you do the math and you get a negative value, you gotta remove it anyway. Now what's the number that's gonna go here? Well, this is the number that corresponds with the coefficient of CO2. In here, I didn't see a coefficient, so that means that there is only one CO2. And I'll just put a 1 here. Now the kilojoules will cancel. And they just want to know the mass, so we know how to go from moles to a mass, aka a gram, right? Periodic table. Remember, when you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole, and then just find the mass on the periodic table of CO2. So I got 12.01 plus 32. 44.01. Cancel out moles. And they didn't say specifically kilograms or grams. So let's see how big this number is and maybe I'll convert it into kilograms. So 1.416 times 10 to the 7th divided by 890.8, .8, and then times by 44.01. Big number. So I'll say maybe 7.00 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A lot of grams. If you need to convert to kilograms, go for it. But they didn't say, so I'm going to leave it in, in grams. So a lot of grams of, you know, of the CO2 is going to be produced. Kind of makes sense. You got to run a whole house. Now we just have to do the same thing for D. What's the mass of water that's produced? Well, start from the beginning. I got to take the, the total number, right? 1.416 times 10 to the seventh kilojoules times by that ratio, throw the kilojoules on the bottom. And now in this case, we're going to say mole of H2O. 
the number is the same for the kilojoules, so 890.8, but remember, this number on the top corresponds with what the coefficient number is. And look here, guys, there's two H2Os. So what number has to go here? Yeah, two. Be careful about that, all right? Now we're just going to go from moles to grams. You know how to do that, right? Mole of H2O on the bottom, gram of H2O up on the top. One mole equals whatever the mass is of uh, H2O. I get 18.016. Cancel the moles out, and we're ready to rock and roll. 1.416 times 10 to the 7th divided by 890.8 times by 18.016. And I get a lot of water molecules, right? I get 5.73 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's grams of H2O. So there you go. There's the answer for C and D. Now there's a couple of more parts, so if you need them, just stick around if you guys are on the playlist. We'll do them in, you know, literally five seconds. But if you want to uh, click the subscribe button before then, that will mean a lot to me. And I thank you so much for that. But anyway, I'll see you in a little bit for part E. All right. See you then. Bye.